Hello fellow humans and welcome to the Madhouse. I'm Josh and today is another video from the Madhouse Library, specifically Top 5 Wednesdays. Today's subject is Best Series Endings. You may remember a few weeks ago I did the worst series endings. Well, here's the best. I did actually film a version of this a few weeks ago, but I was quite drunk by that point, so I decided it's best not to show it. I mean, some of the results were kind of funny, but it also went beyond funny drunk and more I'm going to talk while lying down drunk. So we'll stick with this one. This one I actually find more difficult than the worst series ending, because I generally find most of the series I read I either really really like, or aren't finished so I can't do an ending yet. Also, I don't really like to think about the ending, it's like leaving behind an old friend. It, it upsets me a little bit. Oh, I feel I should point out that because I'm at the university, I don't have most of these books here, so I'll just pop the pictures. But, time to start. Number five is His Last Bow by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. It is the final Sherlock Holmes story, though it wasn't the last one to be written. I love reading Sherlock Holmes, not least because Holmes and Watson seem to ejaculate all over the place. Isn't the evolution of language funny? But this one holds a special place in my esteem, second only to A Study in Scarlet and The Final Problem. To be completely honest, much like the Naval Treaty, it's more of a spy novel than a detective novel, but it's still great. Sure, Holmes makes a few blunders in revealing his deception, but the story and the description is just fantastic, and it's a great ending to Sherlock Holmes. Though, on the subject of endings to Sherlock Holmes, I'm quite looking forward to that Ian McKellen film later this year. I'm a big fan of Sir, Sir Ian, and what I've seen thus far seems quite good. Number four, then, is Shadow Wave by Robert Muchamore, the last book in the first Cherub series, not the Asimov series. You may not know this one because they are intended for younger readers, but I started the series when I was 11, so... It is a lot of fun, and it's a fantastic finale too. You get to see more of Kyle and his adventures, which is a rare thing in this series. And the closure it brings is amazing. In The Recruit, the first one, James is a spoiled, immature little boy with no future. Whereas now, he is a, a mature young man, he's got a future ahead of him, he's going to Stanford University for heaven's sake. Um, he's got a silly girlfriend who he tries not to cheat on actually, and he does fairly well with that. that. He's got a cooler head, so he's dealt with his temp, and he's even managed to meet his biological father, who even though he was an asshole, it's still something that he didn't have before. It's, it's a good, good one. If you know the characters and have read it, you will truly love that. And if you don't, read it. The Recruit is quite good, but my personal favourite one is Divine Madness. Number three, and I reckon this is going to be a particularly popular one amongst everyone taking part, but I still think it's the case, is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows. It's such a wonderful conclusion to the series, I find. Uh, very imaginative. You get to see that Dumbledore isn't just this wise old man who's always been in that way. You get to see that, like Lupin says, in The Order of the Phoenix, the world isn't split into good people and death eaters. Dumbledore was a good man, certainly, but he had done some terrible things. Voldemort's death was great. The film was interesting, but it wasn't quite right. Voldemort was supposed to die a very, very mortal death. His body just dropped. No puff of smoke, no turning to ashes and blowing away, just falling to the ground to show that despite all of his attempts to avoid mortality and twisted himself into something inhuman, that he was still very mortal. And also the crooks of the whole thing, the Elder Wand, and the reason why Voldemort didn't win straight away was just because Harry and Draco were wrestling in the manor. The greatest plans of the greatest wizards of all time taken apart by two boys. It's very clever and I love it. Now, number two is Infinity Cage from Alex Garrow's Time Rider series. Truly interesting series, um, but with a few shaky bits in between, like the one with the dinosaurs, but the finale was great. It ties up all of the little loose ends. The underlying Pandora theme throughout it has been revealed. 
And it, there's a solution to the Fermi paradox, or Fermi, I don't know if that's how you say it. You get to finally meet, um, is it Wolstein or, I won't say Waldstein, but he's American, so probably doesn't say it like that. And it's got some very interesting points about morality and judgment, and also about existence. Now, before I get to what, in my view, is the best finale to a series, there's some honourable mentions. Two of them, in fact, although one of them is probably cheating. The Shepherd's Crown by Terry Pratchett, which hasn't been released yet, it will be released in September, but given that it's supposed to be the final book in the Discworld series as a whole and in the Tiffany Aiken series, it should be good. I love Tiffany Aiken and I love Pratchett, so I'm ex I have high hopes, but of course I could be expecting too much. The other honourable mention is I Shall Wear Midnight, the current last book in the Tiffany Aiken series, which is fantastic. And then number one is Drumroll. Dark and Tame by Philip Reeve. I mentioned this in the worst series ending video because I wanted to lighten the tone. Check it out here. So I will be brief. It's fantastic. Odin is awesome. An Anna Fang returns, kind of. And Hester and Tom are reunited. Hester is an absolutely fantastic character in that. She's so tough and strong, but it's still so sweet. And all of the loose ends are tied up. It's practically everything I could want in a finale. It makes me happy. Okay, so that's it for the list. I've just got a few notices for you now. On Friday, there will be a video about how books have saved your life and also an extra video, probably on Saturday, which will be my review of A Darker Shade of Magic by V.E. Schwab, which you will obviously see in the video, but you'll also see in my new blog, which is madhouselibrary.wordpress.com. I haven't put much on there yet, but I plan to. It's, it seems kind of fun. It's mostly about books, but there's also a lot of my musings on other things that don't quite fit in with this channel. And as always, thank you for watching. Please click like and subscribe and even share this if you want. It will make me quite happy. I would also really love to hear from your comments. Are there any books that you think are great ways to end a series? Anyway, cheers and goodbye.